you want to do some mad mods to your daily ride but you don't know exactly where to start? Do you want a little bit more sizzle in your daily sausage? Do you want to guzzle a fistful of oysters straight down the gullet without even chewing them? Dude, that's horrifying. You ate an oyster once. It was horrifying. Remember? Can we make the video? Martin, you've got the all new chopped hat. I black on black. Hat. It looks thing. mad. Today, we're going to show you some mad mods that you can do to your daily ride without wrecking it. Without wrecking it. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. That's right, Mighty Car Mods, no one wants to drive a stock car, but maybe you still want to drive a car that doesn't suck, that you can still do all the normal things you need to do with your daily drive. Now, why do I have a daily drive that's a Golf GTI? Why because do you, Martin? Tell us all about it, Martin. Because Tell us stuff, how you love it so the much. The stuff that is happening with the Lavorg is next level, and so next level, crazier than anything. I'm just... I'm... It's the most extensive it's detailed extensive. build we've possibly it's ever extensive. done in the 15 years we've been doing this show. And I'm dropping Marty's the Marty's car is going to be off the road for a while. I'm dropping He the wanted to try uh, what the badge bus felt Are you like. ready? Are you so ready he for asked me to shot? buy him a Golf GTI and I bought it. Today we're going to modify it. I can't drive a stock car. I can't do it. I've driven it. It's a brilliant car. I really, I really like it. Not as good as a Mark 1, but really, really good. Okay. Uh, definitely better than his car. But anyway, we're not going to keep it stock, but we also want to keep this as an actual sensible daily. And I think there's a bit of a, a method and an art to getting it just right where your car's actually better, but you're not going backwards in other areas. That means people don't want to get in your car. The whole point of a daily is people want to get in the car with you. Does your car have 1,000 horsepower? No. Nope. Is your car unfinished at SEMA? Nope. Have you got a million Instagram followers? No. No, I don't, Martin. But does that mean that we're just meant to do this now? Yes, you're supposed to give up. See, no. We're making a milkshake, people. Don't worry about what the rest of the interballs is going on about. We're going to do simple, basic, tasty mods. We have agreed that when it comes to modifying your daily, the number one modification you should do is exhaust. wheels and tyres. Dude, exhaust. Wheels and tyres. Exhaust. Exhaust Dude, is for you. Wheels, the you wheels and tyres are for you. Yeah, but when you're in the car, you can't see them. But when you're outside of the car, you can see yeah, them. Yeah, but that's like 2% of the time you're with your car. Oh, Look how hideous they are. It's so quiet. But look how hideous but the wheels are. I can't see them. I can't see the wheels. I don't care. And when I'm sitting in the car, I can't see them either. What okay. I can do is hear how crap it sounds. Scissors, paper, rock. Did you oh, Best of three. Up. Scissors, paper, rock. I got oh. you. Scissors, paper, rock. Boom! Exhaust. We're doing people. the exhaust. Let's can't go. Can't even up. see the wheels. Don't even care. Exhaust is going on. Where is it? The first step is to jack up your car. Don't have a hoist? No worries. Today's mods are easy to do on the driveway. Just make sure you use a quality jack and some proper jack stands. Exhaust are one of my favourite mods to do on cars, particularly something like this, particularly for a daily. As it gives you a bit more connection to the vehicle, you can hear what's going on. Some cars are really quiet. If you like that, get a Tesla or something with really big mufflers. These are pretty quiet from the factory. That's considered a good thing. If you like driving and particularly like the sound of it, it gives you that nice connection to the car. So it'll obviously fix that lack of sound. It also is a really common way to try and fix the tips. You can just buy exhaust tips to bolt on, but for the the kind of time and effort required to put a cap back in is not much work at all. Now, some people, particularly on this car, see really good gains by doing a downpipe with a stage two tune. That's a tune that we don't have, so we're not going there today. And it's also become really controversial about whether that's even legal. So a lot of companies have stopped supplying those because of EPA issues. And you don't want to be driving around in a daily, constantly worried that you get defected. The fines for messing with this stuff can be really, really high. In Australia, if you pull cats out and don't put them back, uh, you can get, well, basically, defeats the purpose of buying a cheap daily because you've just spent twice what your car's worth paying for your fine. Yeah. So anyway, first thing we're going to do, cap back off and... In the bin! Golf exhaust come with these slip joints, which is a bit different to the flanges you normally see. Uh, just heaps of penetrant though, let it soak, especially if you live somewhere really rusty. You also want to put some silicon up here on the exhaust hangers, it'll make it way easier to get off, uh, particularly if you've got a specialist exhaust removal tool. Also, if you need to get some mad WD-40 specialist stuff, there is this awesome Mighty Car Mods Garage starter pack, this is limited edition. It comes with lanolin, penetrant, silicon, and spray and stay, which is like WD-40, except you spray and it stays, and that there is available exclusively at Super Cheap Auto for a limited time. Martin, have you got my little exhaust hanger removal tool? Martin? I can't find it. What do you mean? Uh, I know, it's like your favourite tool in the whole garage. I, I bought that it. from overseas. I cannot find it. I've been looking for it for ages. I can't find it. It's not there, it's gone. Removing exhausts on modern cars has become so easy. A couple of clamps and some exhaust hangers and it's done in less than 10 minutes. How easy is that? That's amazing. That's awesome, hey? 
In the bin, our feet are sand. Factory exhausts have come a long way. It's no longer 1997 and their pea shooter pieces of crap. Look at this. This is all like really nice bends, really good flowing, nice and big. And I know this resonator, people get rid of them so that it makes noise, but you can understand how why that is so effective. Uh, the back muffler is really low profile, so you don't lose too much height at the back. You've got the tips, it's really nice big hangers, so it doesn't bang around, it doesn't make noise, and doesn't transmit noise back into the car. Uh, so yeah, good for a stock factory bit of kit. If you do want a little bit more noise, aftermarket is the way to go. All right, this is a Cobb catback for the Mark 7 Golf GTI. Cobb sent this to us, and there are a variety of different options when it comes to what exhaust you put on your car. You can do resonated, you can do non-resonated, you can do flaps, you can do no flaps. This here is their basic system. They do make a kind of more expensive, fancy, light titanium one. This is a daily. We're going for basic mad mods to increase the chocolate flavors in your chocolate milkshake, and that is exactly what we are doing. While bolt-on modifications may seem limiting in terms of their customization, the flip side is that they're quick, accessible and designed to fit, which is perfect for the beginner or someone wanting to modify their daily without a heap of specialist tools or knowledge. Some of our project cars have taken months to build, but you should be able to transform your car with all of the modifications we're going to show you in this video in less than two hours, even without your exhaust hanger removal tool. If your best mate's lost your favourite exhaust hanger removal tool, um, this is how you actually do it. Just as simple as this, people. Yeah, that's it. A little bit of WD-40 silicon and some teamwork, and the hangers are off with the double pry bar method. These hangers can now be transplanted onto the new exhaust system. So back here you can see already there's a different configuration when it comes to the tips. So the cob has got these mad kind of slash cut tips compared to this Slash cut tips. Do you know what sound these make when you put them together? Shloop. You hear it? How good is it? Like the fit is just like shloop. You all right, man? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what this means? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, Martin. Let's go. Martin is really enjoying. Um, I'm loving uh, it. Trolling dude. everybody. With I'm his not golf trolling GTI, anyone. Everybody. I do not know what is going on with this person. I don't understand him. He tells me every two to three days that he thinks this car's the best. This car's the best, man, the That's golf. The it's so good, it's the best. And you know he's there's the that. cheeky mouth. <laughs> there's the cheeky mouth again. Do you know what I mostly say that? What? When my daily's parked next to your daily. Yeah, I know. Then I, then I particularly say, do you know what noise that exhaust makes when you put it together? Oh, dude, you already said that. Some of you that were watching the last couple of videos may have also seen Listen. that what we're trying to do Listen is we're this, trying ready? to close the gap between Three. the Mark 8 Golf R and the Mark 7 GTI to see how much money needs to be spent to actually get them a bit closer and looking Does better. your car make this noise? Shloop. Okay, man. Ready? Shloop. Like it's... <laughs> I've only ever heard that on golf. Make it stop. Make it stop. Hashtag shloop. It's a German thing. You wouldn't understand. Can you pass me the other ball restrictor from there? <laughs> the what? So the aftermarket exhaust comes with an extra hanger here that actually mounts up here under this mounting point that in GTI format is otherwise not used. Proving more so that the MQB platform is just used for so many different applications. So basically that one goes there. Wait, can I do we're, the noise? We're gonna, what's the noise? Can I do the noise it makes when you put that on? Oh yeah, quick. Ready? Go. Shloop. That was very good, Martin, well done. Shloop, shloop. Ready? Yep. Shloop. Hear that? Shloop. Shloop the whole exhaust on the car, but keep everything loose. Once it's all looking good and aligned properly, you can shloop it all up. All right, the exhaust is on. You can use a can just to make sure. Check it straight with uh, your body kit here. That's particularly the case when you're just putting the tips on as well, but that is done. That's quick, it's easy, it's about 15 minutes. Let's bring it down, start it up, see what it sounds like. It's sounding great, so now we're on to wheels and tyres. When it comes to wheels and tyres, you have got three options. The first option is using the wheels that your car already came with and swapping over onto some mad rubber like these Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. That kind of wheel is easy, safe and perfect for bashing into gutters. It is also absolutely hideous, which brings us to the next option, which is... 
a set of wheels off a higher spec car that is similar to yours. In this case, a set of Pretorias, which are off the better car, which is a Golf R. Which is not a better car at all. Now, in this case, these ones here, are, they are 18 inch. They're a Facebook marketplace. There's a little bit of gutter rash here that's been painted, but they're wrapped in Michelins again. And that is an excellent wheel and tire package that will make your car look a whole lot better for not a whole lot of cash. But there is a little bit of Pretoria cash going on at the moment because people like these wheels, but a great, factory option. The only problem with them is the offset is usually a little bit weak and by weak I mean it kind of sits a long way inside the garden, doesn't fit flush and look kind of fat because wheel fatness is a bit about the width, a bit about the diameter and a lot about the offset and getting it just right without it rubbing is the tricky bit but luckily Volkswagen people have come up with a solution. They have people. It's called the flush mount kit. It's a wheel spacer. It's a flush mount kit. How much is it? It do, it's a flush How mount much kit. How much do they cost? How much does a flush mount kit cost? So this is the flush mount kit that I bought from wheel the spaces. States. It's a flush mount kit, wheel dude. Wheel spaces. They don't spaces. call them wheel Let's spaces. Let's agree to disagree, they're wheel spaces. It's Go. a flush mount kit. Look what it says on it. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about spaces. That. This here will say a flush mount kit. Look at this. It says... It says wheel spaces. All right, it says wheel spaces. So basically, these here um, will go... Look, the idea of it is, is it's basically designed to push everything out a little bit. So instead of getting that weak offset, it gives your car a more planted look. It does make it look aggressive. It does make it look cool. And it's a popular thing that a lot of people do. They're multi-fit. Anyway, so These will fit 5x100, 5x112, the center bores, the Thank standard you, JDM size. They don't have studs pressed in. There's no mounting bolts. Believe it or not, wheel spacers are one of the most searched car modifications on the internet because they're a cheap way of making your car look better. You'll need longer bolts because the factory ones won't make it through the wheel and the spacer. There's cheap spacers online and there's expensive ones from reputable companies that sell for hundreds of dollars. While the spacers are a very popular option for a lot of people, yep. the fact is it's a spacer. The car wasn't designed to run it, engineers don't love them and Depending on where you are, it's also possible they're illegal. But it does actually look better, and it means that this wheel is now at a better offset, which means better offset wheels can potentially look fat, which brings us to option three. The factory wheel looks absolutely horrendous and can go in the bin. An upgrade like this Pretoria looks so much better. It's mad for that OEM Plus look, but it's not really giving you the right stance and fitment unless you run something like a spacer which we don't want to run. There is a third option, which is you can get a JDM wheel. Ah! Just because it's Japanese made wheel doesn't mean it will only fit a Japanese car. You can get them in the correct PCD. You can fine tune your offset and your size and all that stuff. And they can look excellent even on a German car such as this one. So we're going to give these a whirl, stick them on and see what it looks like. One thing to keep an eye out for is often these wheels have a slightly different kind of wheel bolt not wheel nuts in this case. The factory one you can see has like a shallower angle. This one has a steeper angle, but this matches the wheel and the length is also good too because the size of the back of the hub is a little bit different. So that's gonna go on the car, see what they look like. Once you've got the right bolts, it's also a good idea to use some hub centering rings to center your new wheel onto the hub of the car. These simply slot in and then the wheels are placed over the top. Double check your tightness with a torque wrench and you are good to go. This is an 18 by 8.5 plus 44. Now people playing the wheel game along at home might be, that still sounds kind of weak. But when you add those numbers together on this particular platform, I think the fitment's really good. It's just nice and flush, but it's also not gonna scrub on everything and ruin your daily drive. Now we've also dropped down from the 19 that originally came on this car down to an 18. So lots of golfs come with 18, 17, 16s even. This performance pack came with a 19. There is a significant amount of comfort that can be achieved by dropping down a tire size or a wheel size. And it also means that there's way more tires potentially available for your car, particularly if you're like going up to 20s or 21s or whatever, and also uh, cheaper. So we are down now to a 2354018. We were on a 22540, so there's a little bit more sidewall. Uh, and I know some people overseas, their cars don't have adaptive suspension and stuff. People all over the forums are saying they're changing the 19s and they're really unhappy with how it is. Look, it's different for everybody. Everybody has a different tolerance. Our roads in Australia are not that great, so going to an 18 is an excellent option. What about race pads on my daily? Race pads seems like an easy upgrade. A lot of marketing goes out there saying, you should put these pads in. There's no downside. Well, usually there is. As you know, with modifying stuff, sometimes you give and you take a little, but a race pad, while well, it might work really well on the track when everything's really hot and give you really good repeated performance, on the street, sometimes they don't work as well if you are actually just dialing this thing all the time. You also have to sacrifice something. So to get that extra performance, you're gonna make more dust, 
you're potentially going to chew your rotors, chew through your rotors quicker. And the worst one, I think, for a daily is noise. If they're really cold and they're really noisy, a lot just of the time screeching. they are. When you go up to slowly up to a set of lights, or you're driving into your house or something, you're just, just making all this noise, which for a daily you don't really want unless you're trying to like live the race car life. Upgrading your intake or your airbox system is a surefire way of getting some mad noises, particularly if you've got a turbo car. But you may also possibly unlock some extra kilowatts as well. Now this here is a whole system that kind of collects the air here, filters here and goes all the way in here. Some people are just going to change this and add a pod filter which obviously makes lots of noise but that also could be illegal depending on where you're living so you might want to think about doing an enclosed system. I'm going to upgrade all of this but while it's off it actually gives us access to some other bits that we can also upgrade easily with some tasty modifications. There's been a lot of speculation over the years about air intakes and how much power they actually make because a lot of factory systems are now really good. But what you can't argue with is the sound, especially with a turbo car. And in some applications, people are seeing some decent gains on the dyno. The best gains are made by replacing the whole intake. And in our case, we're also gonna be upgrading the turbo inlet pipe to try and free up the flow of air into the turbocharger. This is an aftermarket turbo inlet pipe. This is the factory one. And this here, for Golf GTIs, a lot of people say is one of the most important modifications that you can do for your car to get as much air as you can with as little restriction as possible to the turbo. You can see the uh, OEM plastic one here. It does kind of get quite small. And there's also a bit of a hump that the air's got to get around. This here removes that completely. And because I'm changing the whole intake system, it makes sense to change this at the same time. Now, because we are going to be tuning this car as well, which is one of the best bang for bucks mods that you can do on your car, we are going to need to look at a couple of other things as well. And while these are off, it gives us perfect access to the factory diverter valve. If you're modifying your car, and particularly if you're adding boost, which is what we're doing with a tune, then now is the perfect time to upgrade it. So we are going to be replacing it with a GFB DV Plus designed and manufactured and invented in Australia, which is freaking awesome by Brett. Brett's a mechanical engineer and turbo expert from GFB and he's here to talk diverter valves. When this first started, um, the factory diverter valve on the old Mark V, um, they were, had a rubber diaphragm and as soon as you tuned it, it would pop. So you know, the market was begging out for a solution to replace the, um, the stock factory diverter valve. So you were losing boost, throttle response. And the Mark V was also the first generation where the um, electronic all-in-one diverter valve was first introduced on, on this platform. So whilst it was a step forward with the electronic control, um, there were some you know, performance deficiencies that you know, were also there that we wanted to solve. So we wanted to make it more reliable, hold boost better, and give you the performance back that some of the electronic control took away. So if I'm just gonna do a flash tune and I'm gonna change my diverter valve at the same time, I literally just take that off, bolt that on, put it back together and I'm done. Yep, that's it. So yeah, it's, it's direct bolt on, take the factory valve apart, put that in its place, bolt it on there. But because you're doing an intake, um, sometimes the intakes can eat into the clearance that we've got to fit that. So I've brought you something special. Um, this is a new addition to the DV Plus lineup that will help with issues like that. So this is the stock diverter valve. It's just an on-off solenoid. Um, the solenoid coil is good. The valve mechanism is the bit that we like to replace. This is where you get your benefits for boost holding, reliability and performance. Then you gut that and that's going on to replace yeah, that that's part right. that wears out. Yep. So okay. we're, we're fixing the deficiencies of the factory one. Now, um, because you're doing an intake, where this sits on the car, the DV Plus does actually make it sit a little bit taller, so you might run into clearance issues. Okay. Or you might find that um, the diverter valve is a different brand and you can't gut it. Yep. Um, so that's like the done. Continental stuff on the Mark 8s? Continental, yeah, that's right. That's yep. a perfect, okay. perfect example. So this DV Plus that we've added to the range, it still does DV Plus things, but it has an integrated solenoid. Yep. So it is actually shorter than the stock one. So that is now just a straight swap and you won't have any clearance issues. Oh, so literally just three bolts through it, plug it in yep. and done. That's it. So same DV Plus performance, reliability and benefits, but just clearance issues or where you can't reuse the factory solenoid. Before installing your diverter valve, you just want to make sure that there's a little bit of oil on the piston. So basically just tip up your bottle, take the piston out, put a little bit around the outside. Once that is done, 
you don't need to oil it again. There's been a lot of talk about, like, does it need to be serviced? Do you need to do anything with it? I've spoken to the engineers and the guys at the factory. They've tested them through millions of cycles dry. They're absolutely fine. It won't void your warranty. Little bit of oil around the piston, install it, then you don't need to touch it again. The DB Plus retains factory ECU control and can give better throttle response, faster boost recovery on gear shifts, and solves any leaking issues on boosted cars. And our car is about to get boosted. The diverter valve and turbo inlet pipe are easy upgrades and it makes sense to do them both at the same time. Next, it's time to install our intake system. So we're installing a Cobb intake system. There are all sorts of really fancy ones. You can get carbon fiber one, even Cobb make fancy ones, but I just wanted to get a basic one that would do the job of sounding matter and hopefully unlocking some kilowatts. So we're gonna punch that in now and then we are almost done. Alongside your new wheels and tyres and your exhaust, an intake system and a tune are the best ways of unwrapping your banana and huge gains will be made here, particularly with turbocharged cars. You can just do a flash tune on its own and you can run an intake on its own if all you want is some noise, but it's the combination of both that will give the best results. Our system comes with a custom airbox and pod filter which is enclosed to keep it legal, but you can remove the top section if you want some more noise. Just check your local area to see if it's legal to have an exposed pod because you don't want to be constantly worried about that when you're rolling around in your daily. Alright, our intake is in, you will hear that soon, but now it's time for the tune. Your car probably left the factory with conservative power figures based on longevity, servicing and warranty, but you can unlock some of the potential of your daily drive by installing a more aggressive aftermarket tune. There are heaps of different options when it comes to tuning your car, flash tuning it either at a garage or at home. We want to do it right here, right now. So I've got an access port and this here is loaded up with a map that is suited for this intake and that exhaust. So we're going to load it on and welcome the boost. An aftermarket tune is the best bang for buck power mod you can do with gains of 25 to 35% being common. Do your own research about which tune works best for you and your car, but this here is a great DIY option to do at home in around 10 minutes. Also keep in mind that your warranty may end up in the bin. And that's it, the tune is done. By now, the first stage of mods on your daily are done. Your car will be looking better, sounding better, and you've got better tyres and you've unlocked the performance to match. Now's the time to focus on any other modifications that will make your daily a better place to be every day. Things like stereo, dash cams, sound deadening, a phone mount, stickers and interior modifications. And then if you're looking at doing some track days, you want to look at suspensions, sway bars, brake upgrades and down the rabbit hole you go. If you need some inspiration, check out our channel where you'll find hundreds of videos on how to modify your own car yourself. Also make sure your insurance covers any modifications you've done on your car. Shannon's Insurance, who are a proud sponsor of Mighty Car Mods, provide insurance for motoring enthusiasts, classic and modified cars. And they can also cover your daily driver, even if it's stock. So check out Shannon's for a quote. I'm finishing off the GTI with one of our JDM Melon air fresheners and then one of our special edition chopstickers in German, Gehackt, which is proudly going on the back of the car. And now, it's time for the first drive. Here we go, first drive, let's go. Oh, yes! Traction controller loves it. It comes on strong, doesn't it? This is so fast. So that's the purity that you speak of, is so that right? The, the front wheel spinning, is that the purity yeah, that you, you love? have control over? It's not some robot telling you what to do. Like, it just feels good. And the, the sound is good, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's yeah. just enough. <laughs> Dude, this is going to chop your off so hard. So hard. Look, if... look at it go. <laughs> look how fast it is. I know. It is quick. This is amazing. Yeah, I mean, really, this is kind of, this is how it should have been from the factory, right? Absolutely. Really. Absolutely. So you're happy, Martin? I love it. Happy with all your thanks, mods? Thanks for all your expertise, man. No this worries, is, um, Martin. This is a great result. And you know what? It's comfy. We're talking, we've got aircon on, having a good time. But if I plant it, it just wakes up and it just cracks. Yeah. You're not even in sports mode yet, mate, but you can save that till you're on the track. Oh, dude. It's amazing. And you actually love it? Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. Go. What do you reckon, Alan? Whose Honda is this? This is Martin's new Those Honda, right? This is not a Honda. <laughs> this is Martin's Honda GTI. It's not a Honda. Have you ever been in one of these before, a Golf GTI? Is it a Honda? <laughs> no, no, it's a Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, okay. Have you ever been in one? <laughs> no. Is this the first time? <laughs> yeah. What do you think? It's like a Honda. Comfort, power, class. Front wheel drive. Well, okay. Yeah, come on, dude. Whose team are you on? Don't you like front wheel drive cars as well? <laughs> Marty's uh, seems to believe that's the evolution of, of golf purity. 
<laughs> it is <laughs> nagging. <laughs> it is. You know when a dog has an itchy bum? Yes. And it just drags itself by the front legs? Yes. Is that what you think of when you use yeah. the front wheel drive car? But when we go down here, Martin, here we go. We haven't done this yet. Sports mode. Alright, we're in sports Tire mode. Tire frying mode. Are you ready? Uh, come on. Hey, if let's this see. doesn't convince you nothing, well, let's go. It's pretty good, right? That's okay though, because that's purity. He's, I'm looking after him, don't worry. I'll get him back. Don't worry. Then you like Subarus. I love Subarus. We should modify my Subaru. Have you got a Honda? Don't have a Honda. <laughs> have a fucking Golf Wagon. Golf Wagon. A what Golf Wagon. <laughs> Enjoy your Golf GTI, mate. I hope you enjoy it. Of course, we are going to be now hitting the track this versus the Mark 8 Golf R to see how much of a difference there is. To see how I'm much of a difference. I'm actually a little bit worried. To watch the GTI chop the Golf R. I think that's what's going to be happening. Of course it's going to happen. It's going to be good. Lightweight, purity, front wheel drive. Front wheel drive is king. Like, let's be serious. Front wheel drive is king. And then, of course, Marty will tell us <laughs> that he's been trolling us all the whole time, no. which I still maintain. Nope. The only reason that he has this car is to try and... I don't know why. I don't know why. No, it's about experience, mate. It's shocking. It's good. Anyway, thank you very much, people. If you do want to support the show, you can go to MightyCarMods.com. In fact, I'm going to put together a special pack that's got like a bunch of mad stuff that's all under 20 bucks. A special pack for you people awesome. modding your dailies. See you next time for another episode of Mighty Car Mods. It's food time, Martin. Food time. Dude, we should go play golf. Golf content. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> the internet has become a global town square where everything is compared and everything is competing against everything else. And let me use cooking quickly as an analogy before we get back to cars. I used to like just having a chocolate milkshake. Yeah. You know what I mean? So good. Tasty and Satis chocolate. Satisfying. Yep, or a spaghetti bolognese. Also satisfying. But you can't have a chocolate milkshake anymore unless you get the cocoa beans and ferment them inside a yak's alcohol for a week and then mix it with some yeah. from a mountain goat and some special oat milk and then whiz it all up with a little touch of cinnamon or chilli paprika on the top and then take a photo of it and put it on the internet and then everyone goes, look at that. But then in the real world, you have to drink that thing that's been basted rectally by a beast. And, and you, I just want a chocolate milkshake. And you probably had to collaborate with someone that shows the extraction process of removing that cocoa from the yak's bowels using traditional methods. Yes. Because you wouldn't want to use a modern method. It has to be a traditional method. But let me just look up, let me look up a few things right Cars now. Cars are the same. The and that's where we're going, people. On the internet. We've come to the point where everybody is so concerned and busy with what everyone else is doing on the internet and how they'll be rated and what they'll say, and it should have been this, it should have been that, that they're not prepared just to make themselves a bolognese and a chocolate milkshake. Have you ever been lying in bed late at night and you hear someone go, That's because I just dropped you off. At your house and I'm going home. That is some pea plater dickhead that has removed that. Oh. That is the resonator that stops all those noises. And on previous year models of this Golf, they would do way more DSG farts. From 2019 onwards, they uh, don't do uh, that crazy, crazy noise. But that is the thing that you remove if you want to be a dickhead that everyone in your neighbourhood thinks is shit.